marvel at the eight filaments in this eight watt LED lamp. Um, so let's uh, plug this in and marvel at its spectacularness and check the wattage. So I'm going to screw it into this handy Bainet cap adapter, Edison screw to Bainet cap. Let's get the power meter into view and plug this in because it's extremely bright and just so happens to draw 8 watts. Bang on! So um, this LED lamp is spectacular. This absolutely lights the room. I don't even I don't even have tungsten lamps to compare it to anymore, but it probably is up there with a uh, 100-watt lamp. Hard to say. I'd have to find a 100-watt lamp and do an intensity test, but the illumination in the room is super even, lovely colour. Um, and bizarrely for an 8-watt lamp, you go up thinking, oh, that's going to be hot, and you feel it after it's been on for hours, it's been on all evening, and it just feels warm. Where is that heat going? I even took it out and felt the, the cap, and it just wasn't really hot. So, goodness knows how these... Uh, it must just be the large area that the heat's being dissipated across. Now, something interesting about this lamp, all the other ones I've looked at so far, all the other ones I've decimated, have had glass substrates where they have the layer of glass, the glass filament. Um, you can see the strip of glass with the uh, LEDs on one side, possibly a sapphire coating, I'm guessing, because sapphire is quite commonly used as a substrate for this type of LED. And then the layer of um, the phosphor-loaded um, silicon sort of rubber on either side. But this one is the first one that has these metal core filaments with the extruded... Um, almost like a, a cylinder of the phospholoaded silicon rubber around the outside. So that's quite interesting. The construction inside, the use of these also uh, lets you see the little insulator at the end. So just by looking through it, you can tell that the positives are at that end, and then you look at the other side and the positives at that end. And the way the LEDs are arranged inside, they've got a common bus at the top and bottom and they've got one filament, two, three, four in parallel then bridged across and then they've got four coming back down again. And if you think of it, that we measured the voltage uh, of 75 volts across these and the typical current is 15 milliamps. So that means that if you, you're going to have 60 milliamps going up for the four filaments and across and down the other four. And the total voltage across that is going to be 150 volts. So let's uh, do the maths. Uh, P equals IV. The total series of the filaments and the total current is going to be 150 volts times 0 0.06 equals 9 watts. So it's actually just slightly underrunning them from that. It's going to uh, to get the 8 watts. Now, looking through the glass, because it's quite a chunky thing, I can see the circuit board inside is not really like the other ones. So the only way to actually learn more is to open this. So let's get the opening device. This is going... I'm going to have a lamp shatter in my hand. It might be the right now. It's going to happen at some point bound to happen at some point. I'm trying to keep it relatively intact. I may have to just chow that thing off. No, I think I'm just distorting the, the base here. No, I don't think that's going to come off easily. No, I'm just chowing that up. Okay. Well, that means it has to be the snips of knowledge. Snips. Which is a reasonable enough solution to it. I'm not expecting an awful lot in here because uh, the previous lamps have shown that, you know, the circuitry involved, because of the high voltage across the filaments, is actually surprisingly simple. Oh, I'm seeing a little switching converter in there. Look at that. See the little transformer inside? And two capacitors. There's a fuse here. Oh, that, I think it is a fuse. 
going up to the end cap. Let's say I get this all off. Seems a shame to rip these lamps to bits, but you know what? It's quite interesting knowing what's in them, and uh, if I do it, it saves you guys wondering what's inside them. I can always order more. Oh, this is definitely coming off. The They've brought a wire up here and folded it over, and then the metal has a, the metal cap is sort of going around this. I may actually be able to graft a bayonet cap holder onto this. That'd be quite nice. Oh, this really is just, it's like peeling an orange. Am I going to be any the wiser for this? No, I'm not. Um, I can see a wee chip in there. I have a sneaky feeling that this is going to be fundamentally very similar to the LED lamps, the LED sort of GU10 style lamps. There's not much in the... Uh, there's a few surface mount components on that side, but I think this is really just a switching converter. And the only difference there to the standard GU10-ish style lamps is that this one has the higher voltage. It's got about 150 volts. And is it going to be a buck? It may just be another buck regulator. In fact, it may be similar to the one that... Um, the other one that, uh, in here, although that one had a six-pin chip, was doing it. I don't want to go too much further. Oh, actually, you know what? Do I see a little... Yeah, this is 1.65 millihenry. Is that millihenry or microhenry? It's hard to tell. This is just a little buck regulator that's driving these. So it's taking the mains in, rectifying it, smoothing it. It's got two capacitors there. I wonder if that's just part of the filtering. Or it might actually have one... It might have a capacitor on the other side. Or they could have just used the two to save space in parallel. And that little chip in there, I shall try and read the number on it from out here. I don't want to start ripping this off, because now that I've seen this, I quite fancy getting a bayonet cap base and trying to graft a bayonet cap onto that so I can actually use this lamp for real, because this is really attractive. But yeah, fundamentally, I'm not going to be able to actually reveal much more other than um, the fact that it is an 8-pin chip, probably a fairly typical buck regulator, it, any other lights I've taken apart and I've found the number on the chip, I just can't find them on the internet. It's just not featured. Because um, it, it's almost as if these chips are so new and they're only being aimed, obviously, at lighting manufacturers because, like, the average punter wouldn't actually really have much use for these chips. But, yeah, it's interesting that this actually uses the little buck regulator inside. But that's, uh, it's neat. So a buck regulator delivering 60 milliamps at about 150 volts. And again, it's that lovely glass construction. Yeah, this is nice.